can't believe I'm going to talk about this. Hey guys, Crystal here. And yeah, that. This is something that I've mostly kept to myself since I was like this big. This big. Very, very small. Um, mostly because of stuff that's happened that I'm going to talk about too. Because I decided partially against my better judgment to make this video. Because if you've seen my other videos, um, the asexuality video and uh, the Operation Badass video, stuff like that, um, you'll know that I'm currently on my Operation Badass journey, my accepting and working on my physical, uh, my physical health, my mental health, and just accepting who I am and living my most absolute truth and absolute comfort, no matter what. Uh, not listening to people, how people perceive me and stuff like that, because those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter. I have quite a few friends quoting me that lately in different ways. That's just my favorite way of saying it. Um, so here we are. This video is a little self-serving um, and a little bit self-mental defeating. And I say it that way because my brain has been running full force into uh, all the walls and all the sharp objects since I started this. The fangs, the clothes, um, the, the studying, like, like this, um, all of that. And... Instead of just letting it happen and letting myself fall into one of my depressive cycles, like I kind of did on Monday and was rescued by one of my very, very dear friends, um, I was just going to say it out loud, put it to the world, and get the Sword of Damocles, another quote from another friend, off of my back. So, hi, I'm Crystal, and I'm an empath. Oh, I said it. Not that bad, right? Okay, so what the fuck am I talking about? I'm still learning how to actually talk about this, like I said, and I've only just started my book here. But... It's a type of psychicness, type of way of being that is a little bit extra sensey. <laughs> I'm gonna butcher the fuck out of this. Mm. People who understand what this is, turn away now because this is not a, gonna be a uh, uh, consensive. This is not gonna be a good guide on how to do this. Hmm. Okay. I feel things. I see things. I sense things. I can sense the when the energy shifts in the room. I can see the occasional spectral visitor. I don't like using the word ghost. I don't know why. But anyway. Um so yeah. Um uh, Clear sentience, I learned that from the book, which is the getting the wave of feeling, the energy, just all that. Um, clear audience is the you hear that sudden voice in your head, and I've got stories for this shit. Just so you guys know, there's gonna be examples. Some of them maybe spoopy. Some of the stories I also have people have heard. I know the Chaos Queens and probably a couple of the Troublemaker community heard it because I think I talked about it on Halloween once. Anyway, whoo! Okay. And then there's Claire, what did I say? Claire Sentience? Claire Audience. And uh, Claire Voyance. 
now, uh, which is the seeing things, having the movies play out in your head and stuff like that. Um, I need to stop myself right here. I realize I don't think I completely covered what an empath is. So really quick to the feelings and emotions around them. These are people whose level of empathy is off the charts. They also have some psychic abilities. Claire audience, where you hear voices in your head, uh, usually messages or some sort, depending on your beliefs in spirit guides and the like. Think of it like intuition, but ramped up to 11. Clairvoyance, the images that uh, show up clearly in your mind, sometimes of something happening, also can be very messagey. <laughs> Also, really out of the blue. There's also clear sentience, otherwise known as clear knowing, which is the most common, and it's like I can just feel it, or I just know, or something's gonna happen. It's like a wave of feeling, especially with emotions and the like. There's also clear cognizance, which, um, when your brain, when your intuition helps your brain try to figure out something you're stuck on, when really you just know the answer. There is another topic I want to touch on super, super quick because it does kind of come up, but I don't really explain it, which is uh, there are types of intuitives that kind of go along with what I mentioned previous with the different skill sets. There is physical intuitives. They get most of their senses via uh, touching things, uh, co physical contact. Uh, tarot reading is a good example for physical intuitives. They get their messages through the tarot cards and the like. There's also mental intuitives. These are analysts. Most most mental intuitives are clairvoyant or clairaudient. They receive psychic messages, imagery, sound in their minds. Then there are emotional intuitives, where feeling the emotions of other people around them and sensing the different shifts in the energy, and that comes very, very, very easy. For myself, I am an emotional intuitive with a little bit in physical and mental. Um, emotional is definitely my strongest. I'm going to give this back to my past self so she can fumble her way through the rest of this video. For now. Mostly my strongest skill in those those tiers is um, clairsentience, which is the feeling. And just, it's, I always see it, I always visualize it as a crashing wave of something. Um... Sometimes I know what it is, sometimes I don't. Um, if I know the person, I have a clearer picture of what it is. It's it's a time. And I've been doing doing this. I've been this way uh, since I was about six, seven, eight. Okay, to be perfectly fair, I don't actually remember my actual age. What I do remember is the day the switch got flipped. So, we'll start there. How about that? Um, as a kid, I got detention, which happened a lot um, around that age. Because me and um, a very, very close friend of mine were just trouble with the capital T. Okay? She would drag me into things, get herself out, and forget about me sometimes. And that might have been what happened. Maybe. Or I probably took the blame, because it's also a thing I do. Anyway, detention. So, mind my own business, sitting in, on the, the table in a corner, right, you know, writing lines, I shall not do X, Y, Z through Q. And I got this crash. Something was wrong. Something, something doesn't, something, uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, and I knew it was focused around this friend. Okay. And I remember hearing, like, this this voice in my head, like, an argument. Um, I don't remember what the argument was. It was just this feeling of an altercation and words. I was a kid, okay? And even as an adult, I'm only learning how to understand this now. Um, and I knew something was wrong with my friend. I wanted to get up. I wanted to go. I had to do something, right? Tried that. Got in trouble. That's as far as that goes. Uh, fast forward to the end of recess or lunch hour or something. My friend comes in and she's holding an ice pack to her face. Like, so I asked her, like, I'm like, did you get hit? 
that was oh yeah i forgot to mention i felt like my face was hurting so i'm like did you get hit and she just kind of looks at me i'm like no like were you arguing with with somebody like i feel like you were arguing with somebody and you got hit in the face like are you okay like i knew that it i knew it happened i can't and i so excited kid wanting to tell this story um excited kid wanting to tell the story the only way a kid knows how of course i didn't understand what was going on and my friend looked at me like what the absolute hell you can't know that sort of thing you were here and i was out by the soccer field or somewhere and like but i know i know what i like i know what happened are you like sh it was it was a time okay and moving forward throughout the day um this is one of those moments where i quickly learned to keep my mouth shut because kids don't keep secrets either it was her or someone who heard the conversation or something i don't know all i know is the teachers got involved and i only know that because my mom got involved and i only remember this this part of the story because of what she has told me over the years is that the teachers had recommended that she tell me to stop talking about this sort of thing because it's like kids make up things but it's upsetting to the other kids and i have a couple of aunts uh family friends who are witches and i talked about that too so they lumped that in there because kids wouldn't understand that thing not that most um adults understood that thing in uh the early 90s but i was told to shh so i shh um i've had i've had other like moments of that too i mean um again when i was young ish new school um couple couple grades later graduation uh, i think it was like middle school um i was the black leather jacket goth as i could which was just mostly wearing all black because broke um kid who loved theater and loved being intimidating and was kind of obsessed with vampires from a very young age um shocker i know but yeah i had this air of intimate of being an intimidating son of a bitch and i was also a bit of a brat so i was approached by this girl this this person um and she asked if i could help her join a very very special club i know exactly what it was no 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 um but i am a big wanting to help people sure i will help you get into this very special club tell me what i have to do it was a fake fight all i had to do was show up on the side of the school and there, it was just supposed to be her and like the person the person who was initiating this whole thing or something this part's a little vague um and then we would have a little fake fight and we just had to make it look real and then they would get into the club and i would be given something there was a reward to it i don't know what it was it might have been just as simple as i'll be your friend sure yeah okay fine so graduation happens right school dance uh, me and me and a friend we decide to hang out together this is a different friend the first friend moved away like a long time ago um but we go together we're hanging out we're dancing we're having a good time and it's getting toward the end of the night i'm like you know what we need we need to go right it was this voice screaming in my head leave like okay okay um i went to go to call my dad uh my friends ask me what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong i'm like i have to go i just i have to go and she's like okay so i call my dad up i'm like i'm not feeling good like my stomach hurts something just isn't right please come get me i don't want to be here anymore like that sort of thing right my dad is a king no question something is wrong i'm coming to get you we're done right which is who my dad is on a just a level of just ah, even as an adult 
Dad, I'm having a problem. Okay, click. Okay. Anyway, so comes gets me. Um, we wait with um my music teacher, I think, in the music room because I just didn't want to be anywhere near that side of the school. So stay here. Okay. And we're just talking, like my friend's talking to the music teacher. We're going over like class stuff. I'm keeping my eyes on the window because I want to leave. I don't want this to take any longer than it already has to. I see my dad's car pull up and I'm like, okay, we're done. See you later. I get into the car and the feeling, it's like an oppressive, just get out. Right. And I get in the car. Dad's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, we can, we go, can we go? Right. And the car's pulling back. And in just that, that dim light of like, you know, the, those lights that are over school doors. So you to see people breaking in, there's like two bushes on either side. And I see not one, not two, but probably around four people, preteens, right? It's one of the girl and her friends. And I just got hit with this wave of realization that this was not going to be fake. And we got the fuck out of Dodge. So those were my two big Claire sentient moments. Um, and yeah, I got out on the other side, which is great. Right. Um, even, even after that event, like my friend thought it was a coincidence. I couldn't explain it to dad. So I just didn't just didn't explain it to anybody else. Right. And there were a couple of people I could have gone to, like, let's say those ants that I mentioned before, if I had talked to them about it, so much of this would probably have been so much easier and my life probably would have been a little different. But I didn't because I don't know things that I don't know. I've um, I played with the Ouija board once. That was stupid. And part of me will always be just a little annoyed about it, but I don't think I ever talked about it. Um, so this is a really, really small story. I'm at my apartment with my mom and she pulls out a Ouija board, sets it up because she wants to talk to somebody. She wants to talk to somebody who's a living person. That was, that's your first clue. If you know anything about the spiritual world. Count the red flags that are going to be appearing as I tell this particular story. So, set that up. Real person wanting to talk to him. Ouija board. There is no cleansing. There is no grounding. There is no shielding. All the stuff that you would associate with preparing to talk to a spirit. Because, side note. That's a good idea. <laughs> Shielding is kind of like when you like visualize this, this bubble around you. And for me, it's like a World of Warcraft priest bubble. And it helps protect against unwanted intrusions. Uh, grounding is where you imagine yourself being a tree, centering yourself, preparing yourself for the task at hand, and that sort of thing. Cleansing is you cleanse the space, uh, getting rid of negative energy, getting rid of um, pushing away negative spirits, stuff like that. So nothing is going to interrupt the moment that you're about to do. Safety is very, 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 very important. And I was a kid. I didn't know any better. And the person who was in charge didn't. Just didn't do it. Uh, so we're going through this and using the board. And my mom's asking questions. And I just have my hands on it. I'm just another person because that's one rule that she did do. Don't do it alone. Yeah, use your child instead. I'm not bitter at all. Okay. Story hands on the board we're just going through it saying the things and in my in my mind's eye in my head i see this blue lightning just come up my arms across my chest and into my heart and my arms go numb and it's tingling and i'm getting nauseous i'm laughing hysterically right just out of sheer i'm a nervous laugher Okay, I'm a I'm an I'm a nervous laugher and an angry crier. It's a time. But I'm like I can't do this. So I say goodbye and I stop. I I will never touch board in my life. Adult me understands that if that was all that happened, 
I got off so lucky. So lucky. And I've lived in haunted houses before. Um, been around haunted houses before. Sometimes to the point where I actually wonder if sometimes if it's not me. If I don't have friends, friends. If I don't have visitors and guests show up at random occasions because they know that I can sense them. And I can feel them. Okay? I've only ever seen them twice. And that leads me on to my next story. <laughs> Again, it's around the same sort of time frame as the, um, uh, the hit in the face incident. Because my grandma had this really gorgeous old farmhouse. Big property, big garden. There was a wood shop that my grandpa worked, worked out of. It was gorgeous. But there was one rule. Do not go into the basement. It is dangerous. That's where all the canning stuff is. It's not furnished. It's all just solid stone. And it's cold. And it's damp. And it's it's not a good place if, for, for kids. For, for, for little babies. Right? Like, anyone under, like, 16 should not go down there. Actually, my recommendation. Never go down there. That, that, that farmhouse was fucking haunted, okay? I would never go in that house alone because I would always hear someone singing. Anyway, it's hide and seek. Okay, it's me and my two cousins. And one of my cousins is it, so I'm going to go hide. And all the adults are in, like, the other room on the other side of the house. So I'm like, you know what? No one's going to find me in the basement. I'm bad at hide and seek. I always lose, but no one's going to find me in the basement. So I go down these open stairs and I turn this corner past this shelf of all grandma's canned stuff it's an open shelf so i can see the other side of that see the other side of the room so i have perfect vantage of anyone coming down those, side, those stairs anyone coming down those stairs right and so i go hide and i'm hiding behind um freezer i think i don't remember but it was big so i'm just kind of like doing one of these right and i hear just steady someone coming down the stairs. And I'm just like, okay, I, I got this, I got this, right? And I feel this chill run down my body. They're not footprints of a, of a kid. They're adults. So first response, grandma's coming down. She must have seen me come down. Oh, dear God, I'm going to be in so much trouble, right? Or maybe even grandpa. If grandpa was coming down the stairs, I was screwed, right? So I get ready to come out of my hiding spot to just like, you know, start groveling for mercy. And there is this woman. She's very thin, um, almost like a dark, very gossamer, shadowy almost, uh, long like dress or robes. It's very like incorporeal. It's just kind of like floating there. Um, and she is gray skin, a hair kind of like that, the Einstein meme where it's just like out, but it's wiry and matted, right? And she's got this smile that starts off here, right? Very small, very, and then it just stretches uh, just too far. God, I'm getting fucking chills just thinking about that. Mm, right? I scream bloody murder and I'm up those stairs, right? I get met by my grandma, you know, the rest of probably what happened. I'm telling her that something happened, something happened, something happened. None of my family is into this sort of thing. The ghosts and stuff like that, with the exception of my mom, right? And so I was just making things up to try to get myself out of trouble. Na, 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 na. Yeah, I stopped talking about it till high school. And then, like, stuff was still happening to me all the time. I was constantly anxious, constantly nervous, constantly in pain, constantly enjoying myself, constantly just this pool of viscous emotion, right? Because I can sense everything around me, and I have not had the teachings at this point to learn control to do the shielding to do the grounding all i don't know any of this stuff none of this stuff was taught to me 
So I'm just experiencing it. Okay. But I can't talk to, I can't tell anyone. I've been reading vampire books since this whole thing started popping off. I, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Forever Night, um, True Blood, uh, even Twilight, um, oh my god, I'm blanking out on so many of my favorites. Interview with a Vampire. I just dove into that because I was so out of my element that I just wanted answers, but I didn't know how to get them. Um, I started studying religions and different spiritualities, and I was drawn to uh, pagan and Wiccan and stuff like and those more that way spiritualities. And I started finding answers that way, and then I started getting into writing, so then I started writing vampires and uh, putting all of that on with other stuff that was in my home life that wasn't going well. I started dressing in all black. I started wearing the bits i'm gonna put a screen or i'm gonna put a picture of baby bat which is what my friend dio called me last night when i showed her this picture um this was actually for a play though i didn't know what goth was until this act this day right here um i just saw what the vampires were wearing and i had to copy it because these were characters that existed to own their own bullshit and just be badass. And I felt so lost that I needed that. So I did it. <laughs> For most of high school. And then... I started... I, I kind of started tapering it back. Because... Um, especially once I published my first book. And um, it didn't go well. A lot of people were telling me that I was doing things wrong and I was I needed to grow up and I needed to mature I need to act my age I need to stop listening watching vampire stuff I needed to just stop all of this and become a normal person because I was going to be 18 soon and I needed to find a job and I needed to work and I needed to just do all of the boring adult shit so that's kind of what started happening until the universe showed up with another big stick one of my favorite big sticks because I had a friend teach me how to do Reiki. Reiki? One of those. Energy work. Manipulating the energy around you to do stuff. To, to, and hell, to lighten the load. This friend came from the US and his mom was into Reiki. Reiki. I'm so sorry I'm butchering the words. Um... And he started teaching me. We started talking about being an empath because he knew what it was. Like, I knew the word and I'd said the word a couple of times. And it's like, or telling him, like, what's happening? And he, he knew. My friend always knew. It drove me nuts. Every single time. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. Because mm. I don't think I've ever told him how much that meant to me. It was also the home life stuff. Because my actual world was falling apart while my psychic abilities were getting more. <laughs> so we'd go for these long fucking walks around the school um, just talking about this stuff. When he graduated, I was over at his place and he was teaching me how to do how to do the, 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 these chi balls and stuff. And I started actually feeling like I wasn't insane for the first fucking time in my entire life. I was not feeling insane. <sighs> then he moved. <laughs> Which, fair. You know, life, life goes on. And that, but, but then my husband showed up and I should note that for the most part, I still talk to all these friends I've mentioned with the exception of one, um, that's the middle school one. Um, the first friends helped me with both of my books. The third friend that I'm talking about now is one of the people in my D and D group. 
Like, I never lost touch with these people. Yeah. Reiki stuff and things started making just sense. Moved. And then my husband showed up. Um, he was my he was a healer, in World of Warcraft, and we started off as friends first, building an online relationship. And then he moved here, and here we are, and all that. While we, were, while we were still getting to know each other, he started telling me about his spirituality and the stuff that he's done and he's seen and just validating everything that I've experienced from that, that time back in detention. And he taught me how to shield and how to ground and how to just push away all of those crashing waves that were hitting me every single day, all of the time. Senior year in high school was just a mess, right? I And I'm TLDRing this so much because I'm just trying to hit on the, the beats the universe is telling me. You are real and you are valid, okay? Um, at some point, um, one of the other gifts that gifts that i've experienced from the clear knowing or clear cognizance where you just know without a shadow of your being that something is something's going to happen or something you know from the existence of something and i started losing family i'm gonna glaze past that <laughs> um i think the last and it sucked because one of the things that I've seen being able to see the energy levels of somebody and seeing how they feel and stuff is that you start seeing when someone's going to go before they go, like within the year they're gone. And I'm like, nah, I'm, that's not true. It's not true. And I would ignore th seeing that knowing that that's bullshit that's not part of any of the skills that i've been using so far right and then they go i'm like it's coincidence brush it off brush it off and then what happened again and what happened again the last time it happened i stopped i couldn't handle knowing that i knew and i couldn't do anything um, there was a whole bunch of, like, it was nothing I could have done. There was nothing I could have helped. Pe people just go. When it's your time, you go. It's a thing. Um, but I couldn't handle that they were gone. And so I stopped. I stopped practicing my spirituality. I stopped honing my skills. I stopped acknowledging that I was seeing spectral visitors. All of that shut it all down i stopped dressing goth as much as i enjoyed it uh i even stopped wearing these i didn't actually wear them around i was only technically wearing them for halloween because there are certain things in small towns you just don't do um but i i think i actually threw out my original pair of these this is my third i think or second one of those um but yeah no shut it all down i do i no longer want to stand out I'm going to work that nine to five job, pay bills and enjoy, you know, my nerd things. Um, I'm not even going to write anymore because I just don't, the book didn't go well. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. That's how that went for years. Just, I even stopped like, Hey, it feels like you're having an off day. Can I, can I help? Cause I used to do that a lot. I just shut it all down. And then enter the vampire Jack Townsend. The biggest stick the universe has used. I'm not quite happy how I worded that because he's a person and not a tree branch, but Jack Townsend is one of the most wholesome content creators on the planet and a huge mental health advocate and just a beacon of positivity and that sort of thing. It's because of his content that I decided to actually relax and do things my way a hundred percent instead of the 50. That man is a arbiter of transformative chaos. This is this this is now a month ago. I'm scrolling through Instagram reels. I just discovered Instagram reels a few weeks prior. 
And most of it is cat stuff, um, how to survive your trauma, ADHD stuff, just all kinds of just meh trends, right? Not Never looked into cosplay. I have not really done much vampire stuff, even though I've been working on my book for three years. Um, and then it was just boop, video of what would you do if featuring um, this guy who is dressed in vampire goth attire with the fangs and the eyes and he bursts into the room. What would you do if a vampire? And then the song Carry On Your Way With so uh, Sun plays. And for those of you who've watched Supernatural, you know what that means. And then his face goes, ah! and he runs, and there's an effect of speeding vampire whooshies, and he's gone. I have never been so intrigued by an Instagram reel in my life. So I dived in. Um, I'm going to link uh, his link tree down below. I started watching all of his reels. I started watching his YouTube videos. And as he's talking... As he's explaining his personal truth and the idea of if you believe something, if you feel, if you experience things like these are your experiences, if you want to dress up as a vampire goth with the fangs and the red eyes and all this other stuff, fucking do it because why not? Live your truth and the rest follows, right? I'm paraphrasing like an entire year and a half into 30 seconds right now. But I started sitting there going, you know what? I'm already trying to look after my physical, my mental health. And there's so much of my mental health, my spiritual health, my emotional health that I have been ignoring for years. I only have one way of doing things, and that's ramming speed. So I let go. I stopped blocking things out. I stopped ignoring the signs around me. I got this little bastard that I've pulled three separate cards. Um, each having the same message. You are on the right path. Keep going. Here we are. I'm doing research right now into being a psychic empath because that is what I knew first. I'm also studying other things because there are th other things that are also tracking, but I'm not wanting to do a um, qualifier for that because I don't know about the rest of that stuff yet. So, yeah. I'm Crystal. I am obsessed with vampires. I am an empath. I am a emotional and mental intuitive. I sense things around me. I'm clairsentient. A little bit of clairvoyance and a little bit of clairaudience. And this is just a part of who I am. And I'm talking about it instead of being afraid of what people are going to think. Because those that matter don't mind. And those that mind don't fucking matter. Woo! I did it. I said the words. If you have made it to the end of this very long video that I am going to have to edit down, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I got it all. And if I didn't, there'll be a follow-up. I mean, I will probably do a follow-up by the time I finish my research. Because that way I'll know more and I'm not sounding like um, a chaotic chihuahua on a bender. <laughs> um, if you like this video, like it. Comment down below if you have something to say. You know, I respond to most of them. Um, I stream on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Roll at Random series where I let the dice and Instagram mostly decide what game we're going to play, what thing we're going to do. And also, if the game has choices that must be taken, I'm not the one that decides. You are. So, I hope you come check that out. 
uh, Chaos Queens are streaming on Thursday. Marta, Violet, Mars, and myself. Uh, we do productivity sprints where we write, or we crochet, or we we do something semi-productive, or we just watch videos. And then uh, once the sprint's over, we chat. So if you want to come check those out, that is every mostly every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time. I love and appreciate every single one of you. And we will see you guys in the next video or stream. Depending on where you find me next. Bye guys. <laughs>